and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And today I would like to talk about potential or what is commonly known as voltage. And so in particular, I want to concentrate on the working definition of voltage and how we measure it. But before we start, I want to talk briefly about something that you're probably already familiar with that will give us an insight on how voltage works. So what I have here is two masses, and I'm going to raise those masses a certain height. And as you can see, what I've done is I've raised both masses by the same height. And the question I ask of you, which one has the greatest potential energy? Now, you probably already assume that the greater potential energy is mass 2 because the potential energy of any particular object is simply its mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity, if this is a gravitational field, and we're assuming here this is constant, times the height that you lift it. Another way of thinking about it is, is we've have done some work, and that is the work, of course, is equal to the force multiplied by the displacement that you take it. And of course, there is the force that we've overcome, and there is the displacement. But because this is a larger mass, clearly this guy has a smaller potential energy simply because the mass is much smaller, even though the gravitational acceleration is constant and the height that we lift it is constant. But what if I wanted to ignore the mass? What if I wanted to say, look, I'm interested in this particular point here, the fact that I've raised it over here, and I'm more interested in how much potential energy does every gram have? Now, in that case, what I would need to do is to say, OK, what is the potential energy of this guy? And then what I would do is I would divide it by its mass. But the potential energy here of this guy, I would divide it by the mass of this guy. In essence, what I would do is I would end up getting the same value because I end up getting only GH, the gravitational acceleration, multiplied by the height that I raise it at. And of course, the mass disappears. And so what we end up getting is a concept called potential. That is, what we're ending up getting is the amount of energy of every gram of these particular materials. And so let's say this was five grams. This will tell me how many joules of energy I'd raised it by per gram. And I'd get the same value over here, even though this may be 30 grams because I've divided it by that same amount. This is the same when we lift or move an object in an electric field and the property we're interested in is charge. So again, in this case, as you can see, I have an electric field this case and it's going down, which make, would make this region negatively charged because electric field lines go from positive to negative. And in this case, I'm making these objects here positive test charges. And so in order for me to increase its potential energy, I have to move it in that direction. It wants to go this way. It's attracted this way. Therefore, just like gravity and mass, the same thing here is that these charges will need to be raised. I need to do work on them in both cases. The work, of course, is equal to the force multiplied by the distance that I lift it. And in this case, the force that I'm actually applying is against the electric field. And uh, that's, a, that's an electric field force. And the same, of course, as this over here. This guy is larger, and so I have to do more work because the mere fact that the force I have to apply is significantly larger. But what if I decided to say, OK, that's the work that I have to do for this particular charge. But what if I decided to divide it by the charge in this case, and then the same thing I do the work for this guy and divide it by the charge on this case? What I would get is I would get the same value, the same work because I'm now doing it per unit charge or per coulomb. And that is potential. The fact is that potential is the amount of work that you do per unit charge or the work per coulomb of charge. And that is often referred to as voltage. So the question then, of course, is what is there for the voltage at that point and at that point? And what are we comparing it to? Because at the moment, I am only lifting it and showing that I'm changing the potential of these two objects. So let's explore that a little further. 
So here I have a positive chest charge and I have an electric field that goes towards this negative charge over here. And as you are aware that if I have this charge over here, if I want to increase its potential, remember we're ignoring now this charge over here, then I have to move it away from this particular charge. I am increasing its potential. So we know that in this direction, we are increasing the potential, or let's say we're gonna increase the voltage. It's because this value here is going to be moving it further away. By moving it further away, I'm increasing the voltage. But let's point that spot in the center here. But what is its potential just here? It already has potential energy. Well, in order to compare its potential energy at this particular point in time, we need to know where it is zero. And of course, the potential in this situation is zero at infinity. So if we move this far away as we can, we know at that value, very far away, eventually we're going to have absolutely no force between the charges and therefore it will have zero potential. So clearly by moving it in this direction, I'm heading towards zero voltage, which means if I am increasing my potential in this direction, and yet I'm heading towards zero, that means all these values here that we are here is negative. And so the, the value of the voltage at this point in time here is a negative value, but as I move it towards that, I'm increasing the voltage, but I'm getting closer and closer to zero. To give you an example, the potential over here might be, let's say, negative two. The potential over here may be negative six. Now, if I work out the, the fact that I lifted it, I need to work out the change of going from here to here. So the change is the final minus the initial, and I get negative two minus negative six, and that of course equals positive four. You can see I have increased the potential by moving it from here to here, even though I'm consistent with the fact that the potential value is zero at an infinite point away. And so that's in this particular situation. I'm increasing the potential as I head towards zero. Now, I have a video on gravitational potential energy, and that's worth watching too, because in that sense, I go through the same concepts in the fact that what, how do we define potential energy at an infinite point away? So here is an example where we are moving a charge away from a charge to increase its potential energy. Now let's have a look at this situation. Now this is a bit different to what we're normally accustomed to. Whereas the previous example sort of fitted very clearly in with our experience with gravity, here we have a difference. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves again, when is the force between these two charges zero? Well, of course, that's going to be zero at infinity. And that means it's potential at that point because I don't have to apply a force per unit charge. Um, I, I'm going to get a no electric field there and therefore no voltage there. So voltage is zero at infinity. But in this case, I have to do work by moving towards it. Notice that I'm now moving against the electric field lines. So I'm increasing the potential by moving this way. So that is increasing the potential. By going the other way, I'm decreasing the potential, which means if it's zero over here, then all these values here of potential will always be a positive value. So in a electric field that's moving this way, we now have what we have is positive potentials. So the potential here is higher than the potential here. So if the potential over here was six volts and the potential over here was four volts, we've moved it, we've increased the potential. Clearly the change in potential is equal to two volts. I've increased it by moving it closer. Now, both in this situation and this situation, often what we're interested in though is not the actual potential, but the difference between the two. So this change of potential is often referred to as the potential difference. And that, of course, 
is still two volts, but we now label it as potential difference. And in everyday terms, when we talk about voltage in electrical circuits and so forth, we're not so much interested in its potential relative to a point F zero. We're interested in what is the potential difference between two points. And in this case, the two points here are separated by a certain distance. So let's explore it a little bit more by using this great animation from FET with, uh, involved with the University of Colorado with these great animations and I encourage you to have a play with their animations to give you a better understanding of the concepts. So here I have my negative charge and as you can see I have my electric field lines pointing towards the charge. We know that if I have my sensor here, you can see that my sensor has a force towards it. That means my sensor here clearly is a positive test charge because it's attracted. And as I move it away, then what I'm going to do is I am going to increase its potential energy. And because I want to ignore this, I want to increase its potential as I go away. But as I said to you, the further and further away, the less forces it will experience, and I get into a, a point of infinity, then clearly I'm not going to get any forces. So now let's have a look at the potential. Now here is my little potential meter here, and as I move it around, you can see all the values are negative, as I stated earlier. As I move away, that negative value is starting to approach zero, getting closer and closer to zero. But of course, I need to move this to a point infinite way for it to be truly zero. But clearly, if I start over here and then end over here, I have the numbers have seemed to got smaller, but in fact, they've got bigger because I've gone from negative, let's say six thereabouts to let's say negative three thereabouts. We have increased our potential. Now let's have a look and we use a positive test charge. Again, my electric field lines are going away in this case. So if I grab my sensor, you can see it wants to experience move. It wants to move away. And that's because the force is pushing it away. And therefore by moving it towards there, I'm increasing the potential. But again, let's get our voltage meter, so to speak. And you can see all these values are positive values. And as I move it away, this is approaching zero. But as I move it towards it, I'm increasing the potential. Now, let me show you something else that also helps our understanding. So I've got my sensor over here and I can now draw a line. And that line here represents what we call an equipotential. What it basically means is that Anywhere on this line, the potential at that line is the same value. So if I were to get my test charge over here and I place it there, it had have will have a particular value. But if I move it anywhere along that line, the potential is the same because we're not moving it towards or moving it away from our charge in the center over here. I can draw, of course, another potential and it'd be a circle like so. And of course, that is simply showing you that we've got the same distances over here. If, however, I decide to make something a little bit more complex, such as having two or three charges in a given area like so, and let's say I make it a little bit complex like this, clearly the potential at any one point is not due to one charge alone, but due to the effect of multiple charges. And so the lines of equipotential will be different. So as I move it around, you can see staying over here, I've got a negative value, but as soon as I move to this side, I have a positive value. So over here, I have roughly a potential of zero. Over here, of course, it's positive. Over here, it's negative. If I were to now draw the lines of equipotential, you could see that they're going to be a lot more complex simply because we have multiple charges around there. So this, what I've done here is showed you lines that if a charge remains on a particular line, then what we have here is equal potential. That means here there's huge differences here because here we've got negative, the lines are really close and you can see that we're going from negative eight to positive two or three. So there's a lot of potential difference across those two points over here, but there's clearly not as much potential difference over here. 14 here to three. So a larger gap though, there's a greater 
potential difference there but between a larger gap but that gives you hopefully a understanding of the equipotential and potential so let's summarize we've said look we do work on a charge by pushing it against the repulsion now remember if it was a positive test charge that pushing means pushing towards it and similarly if with a negative charge we're pushing our positive test charge away from it and of course in both cases that raises its potential energy however in order to discount the test charge we work out how strong the test charge is and we divide that uh, and we divide the potential energy by that test charge and so we now get a relationship of that the potential or voltage is the amount of energy you change per unit charge and as i said this is called potential and it is known as voltage and of course is measured in volts but more and off what we want to do is we are usually comparing positions and so we say there are potential differences between two points and as long as there's a potential difference between two points when a charge is placed uh, in a field so that there's a difference charges will move in such a way that moves from one potential to the other i hope that's giving you a bit of an understanding of the term voltage uh, please press subscribe and the little bell so that you can get my latest updates and like the video and share with your friends if you think it's been helpful. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.